Now, moving on to our next topic on mobile automation with APM, we are going to talk about what is the APM desktop and how to set it up. Now, APM desktop is a graphical user interface for the APM server. We have already seen how to start and stop the server from the command line, but you can also do it from a GUI, which is known as the APM desktop. So we can start and stop the server. We can also view the logs to see what is happening with our automation. It is available for all the operating systems like Mac, Linux, and Windows. Now, the important thing to remember about this APM desktop, it's not a mandatory setup anymore. So starting with APM 2.0 and above, uh, APM desktop is no more uh, supported and maintained by APM. So it's recommended that you use the command line tool to start and stop your server. But if you still want to continue, you can still go ahead and set up desktop if you're comfortable uh, using a UI instead of the command line tool. Now, this particular uh, application, it is an open source application and it is available on GitHub for download and uh, setting it up. It also used to contain a uh, inspector UI through which you can inspect elements on your mobile application. But uh, from 2.0 and onwards, they have stopped uh, it. And now they have a separate application, which is known as APM Inspector. Also, uh, the node runtime comes bundled with APM desktop. So you don't need to install and configure node separately for this. So let's go ahead and let's see how we can set this up on our Windows machine. The first step, obviously, is to download the APM desktop. Uh, you can do it from the GitHub. So you can go to the releases for APM desktop and here uh, you will find the latest release. Uh, you will see the warning here that it is no longer supported or maintained um, and it may have some uh, security risks. So if you don't want to install it, there is no compulsion to install it. As I said, it's just an optional thing if you uh, want to work with a GUI rather than a command line tool. Now, uh, here you can see for different operating systems, we have got uh, different setups here. So uh, we can go ahead and uh, download it for Windows. Here you can see the EXE. So I can go ahead and download this. Um, I can save it here. And uh, once it completes download, then uh, the installation is pretty much simple. Like any other EXE setup, we just need to follow the prompts and uh, then we can complete the installation. So now that the download is complete, let's go here and uh, let's start this particular setup uh, to install it on our Windows machine. So uh, here you can see it has started the setup. Uh, you can choose whoever uses this computer, which means for all users or for a particular user, and then just click on install and it will start installing this APM server GUI, uh, which is also known as the APM desktop. We'll wait for this installation to complete. Now, once the installation is complete, then uh, let's go ahead and run the APM server GUI. Once we click on finish, then uh, it is going to launch the APM desktop. So this is how the APM server GUI looks like. Uh, it starts with a simple a start server configuration. So by default, the host is set to this IP address and the port. Uh, you can obviously change it if you want to host it on a different IP address, but uh, we can always start the server with the simple configuration. Now, there is also an advanced configuration. So here uh, you have more options, like you have the log file path, you have the log level, and then um, you can also put some time zone. You can allow session override. You can log the timestamps, and then there are some settings for iOS and for Android. Okay, so these are all part of the advanced. And then uh, if we go to the simple, uh, we can go ahead and start the server here. There is also configurations, which we can edit. So if we go uh, into the edit configuration screen, here uh, you will find uh, the Android home environment variable uh, that's already set and the Java underscore home environment variable. So it can be set right from here as well, but we have already done that. So we don't need this. And now uh, we can go ahead and start the server here. Uh, you might get some warnings from Windows. Uh, we can allow the access for this particular application. And then um, 
we will get the APM uh, server logs. So whenever you are running some automation in the background, you can look at these logs and it will tell you whether you are getting any errors and how you can debug those errors. So this is how uh, the server console output window looks like. Uh, you cannot obviously interact here. It will just show you all the information regarding the server, the port, and also any other log output. Now, throughout our lessons, uh, we are not going to use the APM desktop as it is not recommended. Uh, we have already seen how to set it up, but uh, we'll be using the command line tool to start and stop our APM server. Now, previously, the uh, inspector tool uh, used to be part of the APM desktop. Now, if you look here, uh, it is saying inspector moved. Okay, so if you click on it, uh, it will take you to this particular GitHub page where you can set up your APM inspector. Okay, so it's a completely separate tool. It's no longer part of the APM GUI server. Then uh, we can also get the raw logs of uh, our APM server. And then uh, we can also stop the server right from here. So if I click here, uh, it will stop the APM server, right? And then uh, we can also close the logs and then go back to our home screen. So this is how you can set up uh, the APM server GUI, which is known as the APM desktop. Although it is not recommended, uh, you should generally use the command line tool to start and stop the APM server. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.